What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for another team analysis for the LBA. My opponent for week 4 is the Chaos High Dragons and uh, they are actually also in my division. I've basically fought all divisional opponents so far. And so it's pretty important to keep uh, this winning streak going, especially against those still in my division, in order to really ensure that playoff spot. And before I go any further, there is a new addition to my team, and that, of course, I swapped out Quagsire for Mesprit. Uh, I actually didn't use Quagsire at all in my first three battles, and um, for me that was telling, and it also shares typing and weaknesses with Donphan. And for the first three battles, it basically came down to me deciding, do I want to bring Quagsire or Donphan? And since Quagsire was not brought for three battles, I decided to try to grab something with a little bit more utility. Now, Mesprit, of course, will allow me to have offensive or defensive roles, while Quagsire outside of the curse set is a little bit more relegated to defensive roles. Um, also, Mesprit is wonderfully versatile. It has a really nice amount of bulk. A nice immunity to entry hazards and, of course, um, ground type moves will levitate. And then it can run physical or special sets, defensive, specially defensive, utility. It can do a lot of different things. Um, it can also support the team by setting up rocks, similarly to how Quagsire could. And if I can just grab a few really good Mesprit, uh, which I have been tasked with since I drafted, I decided to switch out Mesprit before I caught the one that I could in my alpha uh, sapphire game if i can get the right natures i can really have a lot of surprises with mesprit now fortunately mesprit is going to be really really nice against the chaos city high dragons i keep saying the chaos city high dragons the chaos high dragons although chaos city's high dragon sounds pretty cool too uh, his team of course we see that he has conkleder latios slowbro nidoking mega swampert hitmon lee chandelure heliolisk Kingdra, and a Skyvalier. This is actually the first team I face that just does not get basically all shot down by Weavile. Um, since he has Conkledur and Hitmonlee, and to a lesser extent, um, a Skyvalier, I will not be able to rely on just Weavile cleaning up. So that means my win, uh, my winning kind of strategy here is going to have to be a little bit fluid. Of course, with Mega Swampert and, uh, also, Kingdra, and to a lesser extent, Heliolisk and a Scavalier. Rain is something that I must keep in mind. Uh, Mega Swampert often is seen setting up its own rain, and with Adamant, max speed, he hits really hard, and with Rain doubling that base 70 speed, he will outspeed everything on my team, barring Choice Scarf Sinchino or uh, Choice Scarf Dark Manitan. Um, and I'm not really going to Scarf Cobalion, so that's not really something that would happen. Uh, Rain would also benefit Heliolisk with the Dry Skin ability. It could recover its HP from maybe a Life Orb, and Heliolisk might use uh, Thunder type, Thunder as an attacking move instead of Thunderbolt for added damage. And of course, Kingdra also gets Swift Swim to utilize that high base speed, uh, especially for Rain. Definitely something to watch out for there. Of course, my neighbors are being very noisy. That's always awesome, um, especially this close to curfew. But, uh, it's also important to note as Skyvalier benefits from the rain just by it kind of lowering that uh, four times weakness to fire that he has. Unfortunately, Darmanitan is just not going to be a good fit to bring this week uh, with Latios, Slowbro, Mega Swampert, Chandelure, Kingdra, all those resisting its its main form of offense, which is Fur Blitz. Darmanitan is going to be sitting out. Now tagging in for him will be Mesprit. Of course, Mesprit is a Psychic type, so it will resist the uh, Psychic type moves that Latios and Slowbro might want to throw around. Um, also, it gives me a way to kind of relatively check Conkleder. I don't want to take a knockoff, of course, but it will be a nice check, being able to generally two hit KO things like that are assault that are assault vested. Um, uh, Rotom actually looks pretty good here too, being able to hit several of his Pokemon super effective but I don't like it against um, Heliolisk and Kingdra and Mega Swampert just because with the rain they can just outspeed it and one hit KO it basically. Uh, and also Heliolisk is immune to Shadow Ball. So I don't know if I want to bring Rotom into that situation. I do know that Venusaur is a fantastic matchup here outside of Latios and to a lesser extent as Cavalier. Uh, Venusaur stops rain and strategies pretty cold in their tracks 
uh, even if Swampert is carrying Ice Punch on a defensive Venusaur, that's about a three or four hit KO, barring me setting up with Leech Seed or Synthesis to recover my HP, or even Giga Drain. Um, it is important that Nidoking be kept in check, but uh, the only thing that he really has for my Venusaur is Latios, maybe Slowbro. I'm not even going to count Slowbro just because it's normally defensive. I don't expect him to bring an offensive Slowbro. Um, although Trick Room might happen since he has Slowbro alongside Swampert. Chandelure and Escavalier can be slow enough to work in Trick Room along with Conkledur. But um, Escavalier Banded can two hit KO even a more defensive Venusaur. Uh, whereas Venusaur in the rain, number one, I can't recover with Synthesis. And number two, uh, my Hidden Power of Fire will not be a one hit KO on the Scavalier, even from an offensive Mega Venusaur. So I definitely want to make sure I play with those EVs. I might be breeding a few new Pokemon for this one instead of just sitting on the ones that I have because uh, I, I really need to play around with EVs for this. Togekiss is also a good lock for this matchup. Togekiss, number one, he doesn't have anything to hit me super effectively besides Nidoking and a Scavalier. Uh, Mega Swamper may have Ice Punch. Conkogur can have that too. Uh, you might see... Of course, Nidoking is something that Togekiss doesn't want to stay in on. And same thing with the Scavalier, especially if the rain is up because I can't even do anything to it with the Flamethrower. But outside of that, uh, and maybe Heliolisk, Togekiss fits in quite nicely here, being able to take hits from Kingdra um, and also Latios. Uh, I expect that I'll be running a much more bulky Togekiss just because with the right EVs, Togekiss can actually live hits or a hit rather from something like Latios or even Nidoking and paralyze it or damage it back in return. Um, so living a hit from Latios and then paralyzing it would be fantastic. He doesn't have any way of getting rid of status on his team. Um, the majority of his team is also grounded. Uh, furthermore, with this team, he actually doesn't have... He can set up Stealth Rocks with two members, being Nidoking and Mega Swampert. So being able to get rid of those rocks and keep them off the field, since he only has two Pokemon to set them up, and based on how he's been using Nidoking, he actually has five KOs with it in the entire... in all of his roster right now. Nidoking has the majority of his KOs, so if I can take that down, it seems like he's relying on it quite heavily. Um, it is important to also watch out for Hitmonlee and Chandelure. They might be running scarf sets or weird, like Hitmonlee can run Unburdened with Lechi Berry or Fake on a normal gym. Chandelure can run Substitute and Calm Mind. Uh, since Heliolisk is basically walled by Venusaur, I might, if he brings it, I would expect it to have Hyper Voice, actually. Um, so... He has a lot of different options that he can use, and so beside my little, um, I guess my trinity of Togekiss, Weavile, and Venusaur that I have brought to every battle so far, and those were the first three Pokemon that I drafted, of course, so I'm going to have to play around that nicely. Um, Guy actually mentioned, uh, back when I was drafting Pokemon, Sanchino is a good pick because of its speed, and right here... It fits in fantastically. The only thing he has that can outspeed my Sinchino is Latios. And outside of that, I can hit most of his Pokemon for neutral or super effective damage. Um, Bullet Seed and Rock Blast alongside Tail Slap allow me to hit the majority of his team. I can even 2-hit KO a Scavalier if it tries to switch in on a Rock Blast. I can, well, I guess 10-hit KO is the proper term. But, uh... Sinchino is definitely looking really good here. I just have to decide what type of item I wanted to hold and if I want to breed one to be adamant or not. Uh, of course, a, a timid Sinchino would outspeed Heliolisk, whereas an adamant one would fail to. And of course, Mega Swampert and Kingdra in the rain are going to outspeed Sinchino anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, another Pokemon that I definitely we'll be looking at bringing into this matchup. Of course, Donphan. I think I'm going to keep on with the uh, with Black Tread, the offensive Donphan set. Here, since he has so many Pokemon grounded, and he only has one Pokemon that can be resistant, or in this case, immune with Latios, Spammy Earthquake is relatively easy to do. Uh, also, a lot of his Pokemon are using Contact Moves, so I might bring Rocky Helmet again. I'm a little bit worried about um, Conkledur and Escavalier just because of their ability to take hits. I don't want my team being broken down 
by his damage output. I really need to manage that carefully throughout the battle to make sure my Pokemon are nice and healthy to allow uh, Pokemon like Weavile and Sunchino to clean up on the back end. So, things I, if I had to name the Pokemon I'm expecting him to bring, I'm expecting him to bring Mega Swampert, uh, Escavalier, Kingdra, Hitmonlee, or Conkledur. He's definitely bringing one. I doubt he'll bring both. Uh, if if I had to pick one right now, I'd say he's probably going to bring Conkledur. Uh, so, Mega Swampert, Hitmonlee, or Conkledur. So, Mega Swampert, Conkledur, uh, Escavalier. Probably Latios, actually. Even though he knows that I'm probably going to bring Weavile, Latios puts in a good amount of work against my team outside of Togekiss, because I can't just switch Venusaur into it. He can side shock it very easily. Um, and of course, Latios can use Defog. I didn't realize that earlier, so he might utilize that to get rid of entry hazards as well. And then I think he's also going to bring Mitaking, just because of how often I bring Togekiss. So, to prepare for that, right now I'm tentatively going to say just uh, an offensive with a lot of physical bulk Venusaur, Sinchino, Mesprit with maybe Sunny Day uh, and Healing Wish just to offset some of his strategies relying on the rain. Uh, also Shadow Ball gets pretty good coverage on his team, so either I'm going to bring Mesprit or Rotom. Uh, I really like Mesprit more for this matchup because of his two fighting types. And um, yeah, and so Don Fan just to round out things in the back end. But anyways though, I'm pretty excited about this matchup. I was actually uh, talking to Magapulse a good bit, and he managed to beat the um, Edinburgh Knights starting off, so that is definitely not a slouch of a victory to have underneath your belt. Um, so I, I'm certainly going to prepare for him wholeheartedly, and we'll see if some of these custom sets work out a little bit better, and hopefully Mesprit joining the team will be a good decision. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this upload, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.